It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 205. Here to bring you a gift. Bring you the gift of boldness. Boldness to believe something. Boldness to believe and receive what God's got for you. Not some religious junk. You, you know, all this phony stuff so many people do. But the real God, the real Jesus, the only one that died for you and was raised from the dead. I'm talking to two of you. I'm always talking to two of you. Those of you that are about to become believers and those of you that already are but you're hungry for more <laughs> man i got to go in last week and i was just a preaching away and to look down i'd gone way past my time so <laughs> that's the reason i i don't try to bring my show to this polished end and do all this mental stuff i just cut it off where it cuts off and let her rip people say well david you could fix it you get more people to watch it if you fix it I th- I'm either talking from God or this is the biggest farce, the phoniest thing I've ever been a part of in my life with me doing it. I just don't care. But this is working. So if it's working, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just put a little oil on it every now and then. (laughs) David said, I have have desired fresh oil from heaven. I think it's Psalm 91.10. And boy, I got some fresh oil this morning. I spent about an hour and a half in prayer. And boy, it was smoking. I like to have floated through the roof. <laughs> kind of feel like that right now. I got my songbirds working this morning. I had to pay them to sing. You know, that's the reason we receive gifts for the ministry. So we can pay the birds to sing during the show. My, my geese flew over last show, and it, they fly over everyone. Hopefully, they'll come. They'll turn around and come back by on this show. Praise God. I, I'm talking about light. I, I was winding up last week talking about your loved ones gone ahead of you to heaven, the ones that have. And I mean, I'm, I'm just believing yours did. I believe it's gonna gonna shock people who is in heaven. It's gonna surprise them who ain't there. You know, there's a new movie coming out about Elvis Presley soon, and I'm from Pickens, and we had Presley Chevrolet in Pickens, and the, they're cousins of Elvis Presley. And a lot of people, I've heard them say Elvis Presley didn't make it to heaven. You know what? I just don't believe that. Because Elvis' friends would tell after he died, they said when they would get together and drink, they said the drunker Elvis got, he would make them sing songs about Jesus. And to be quite frank, Elvis in Tupelo, Mississippi, went to buy him a guitar. And his mama, and and the way I heard it, his mama and the owner of the hardware store talked him into buying a guitar instead of a twenty-two rifle. He wanted to get him a gun. And Elvis, my understanding is, tried to take his music to the church, and they rejected him. And I tell you something, if you listen to some of the things that he sang... But the, his friend said the drunker he got, they'd be up two or three in the morning drunk. And Elvis would make them sing love songs about Jesus. And sing hymns and play them. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a statement. A lot of the religious church world ain't nothing more than a... In a, in a, in a whirlwind. Hope you're listening to me. I got, you know how I got in trouble growing up in church? They told me as a child in Sunday school, you ought to read your Bible and pray. Well, I looked around, wasn't nobody praying hardly. Except a little old, you know, daddy would pray over over the food and say, Lord, forgive us of all our sins. And and, and I thought after a while, I said, is he ever going to forgive you? You ask that every day, daddy. I'm talking real good right now. And then I, then I started reading my Bible. I said, wait a minute. This ain't going on in church. And then I started doing what I saw in the Bible. And 
They pulled the guns out on me. I got ridiculed and made fun of. Rokoshte Bukulama Yakorishte. Yeah, I have left out. I've gone over. I've I've crossed over the horizon. <laughs> I've gone full blown, baby. Color me crazy. <laughs> Color me the idiot. I wear it like a badge. Hope you're listening to me. I'll never forget one time the chief mechanic at Presley Chevrolet came and knocked on our door about 10 o'clock one morning. He's on break. Just right down the block from where we live. In fact, several of the Presleys are dear friends of mine. I, I, in fact, I was the same grade with one, one of the Presleys. And uh, they sold a shot, lot of Chevrolets and Pickens. I never forget the chief mechanic knocked on the door and he'd ask for me, ask for my mama, the village idiot, that crazy lady that speaks in tongues. He never, as far as I know, he didn't go to church anywhere. You know, a little town of 600, you know everything. You know stuff for what's going to happen. And Mama reached out the door and put his, her hand on his shoulder and went, Akuta Mashata Raboshni. And tears came down his eyes. And my Mama ministered to him. And I believe when I get to heaven, I'm going to see that guy. I believe it was Smitty. Whew. Hope you listen to me. See, many of you listening to me, you've been turned off by the phony stuff you've seen in the church world. Well, you know, the saying is, if you want to, if you find a perfect church, as soon as you enter it, you're going to mess it up. Well, that sounds real fine to say, but there's a lot of dead churches I'd never go to unless the Lord sent me there to be a spark. Whoo! <laughs> and I am very much graced to do that. Look. I went to First Presbyterian up in Canton a few years ago just to do a men's breakfast and it looked like all the women came too and they were taking notes like crazy and they're some of the hungriest people I ever ministered to in my life. I didn't speak in tongues at the time. I talked about faith, about how your faith in God will work. They're precious people. I said they're precious people. Let me tell you something. When we look through the light of God, through the eyes of Jesus at people, we don't see him as a Hindu, as a Presbyterian, as a Baptist, as a Catholic, as a Protestant, as a Catholic, as a, a Muslim or whatever. You see them, that people that Jesus died for, and you see them with the love of God, instead of beating the hell out of them and criticizing them, you're like, well, we, we believe in God. We believe in God. Listen. Listen. Yeah, I know you're going to think I'm carnal as the day is long, but I watch a lot of movies. And I love Hollywood movie actors. In fact, my daddy was based in, I think it's Victorville, during in, when he was in the Army. And he used to go dance with the big-name movie stars in Hollywood. Well, you know, fast forward, I've, done, I've, done, I've preached in Hollywood. I've preached in the streets. And I've had one of the prettiest, most good-looking Hollywood actresses kiss me on the lips before. Not too many years ago. And I've been in the ministry 42 years. She kissed me right on the lips. And I, I let her too. She's gorgeous. You know who it was? It was a mule named Gracie. <laughs> that starred with Robert Duvall and Low, Get Low and some other movies. <laughs> I, I got you, did I? But it really did happen. She's a, she's a famous actor, famous mule. <laughs> well, if you're religious, I just messed you up. You better go to watch Bugs Bunny. Boy, I tell you, this, this, this morning the show, I'm going by so fast, man. I'm just sharing out of my heart about the light of God. The Word says in Galatians, set your affection on things above and not on the earth. Doesn't mean you don't go deer hunting. Don't mean you don't go play video games. It don't mean you don't fly off to Hawaii and lay on the beach and burn your skin and get a good tan. It don't don't mean stuff like that. But you can walk in knowing He's in you as a believer. And those of you that are about to become believers, I, we praying so much now. I added 12 minutes a day to my prayer life. I, we were starting at 442 every morning. That's one of my favorite engines in a car, you know. And then, uh, but now I'm starting at 430, so I don't reckon there's an engine of 430. There may be, but, but I just backed it up and it was easy as pie. 
easy as eating cake just to because i'm already up getting ready so i just my alarm goes off at 4 30 now for the for the to start praying it goes off at 3 50 to get ready because i eat my stuff and take my supplements and eat me a little something something for 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 i pray and uh but i'm gonna tell you something when you when you pray you see things better than when you did you know talk people say you know god's mysterious you never know what he's gonna do that's a bunch of religious that's exactly what that is and the disciples they get they get back with jesus and he starts telling them stuff he didn't tell everybody else he said you have been privileged to have these things to know about these things it's been granted to you to know these things it is so much stuff we re we've repeated that everybody else was puking out and we laughed it up and puked it out ourselves. There ain't no more God. Just some old junk got repeated. One day the great grandmama, the grandmama, the mama, and the, the youngest grand, great grandchild were together and fixing a meal. And the great grandchild pulled the roast out and she finna cut the end of the roast off and she stopped and she said, Hey, how come we always cut the end of the roast off? And the mother said, well, I always, I learned from grandma to do that. And of course, the daughter said, well, I learned from you, mama. And then the, the, the grandmother said, well, I learned from y'all's great-grandmama, my mama. And the great-grandmama, they said, ask her, said, how come we cut the end of the roast off? She said, well, my pan was too short. Don't you do it. Your pan is long enough. You know, why do you do that all the time, David? That's a ringtone on my phone. That's a, that's from the, the music from the bar scene in Star Wars. One of my favorite songs. <laughs> the word says, your tradition has made the word of God of none effect. Oh, I did people, they kill you over the fact that if you ain't their denomination, you ain't squat. I know people, yeah, just right here in Mississippi, Old Miss and Mississippi State. You know, they say people that went to Mississippi State, the only culture you got is agriculture. <laughs> and then you and then you got old miss you, know, you got folks talk about old miss. And I mean and I mean if if you state people and, and you go to old miss, they won't even talk to you. Your own family won't talk to you. And that's ridiculous. It really is. I uh I love the Manning family. I just be, be you know, and, and he, well, I don't care if you like them or don't like them. I do. I love Archie and Olivia and Cooper and Peyton and Eli. Eli's my man. Everybody say, he ain't no good. Well, he, well, he whooped Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl. Ain't none of the rest of them done it. I said, ain't none of the rest of them done it. You know, uh, Peyton and Tiger Woods and I think Phil Mickelson and, Tom Brady was going to play. They asked Tom Brady if he played with me. He said, yeah, I'll play as long as I ain't got to play against Eli. <laughs> so one, one comedian, John Stewart, said, he said, you got Tom Brady. He's got this gorgeous wife. He got all this money. He, he's like Superman. He said, what is his kryptonite? And then he went, oh, yeah, Eli. <laughs> well, see, you see, I went to Mississippi State. For a while, anyway. I didn't graduate from there. I ended up going to Kenneth Hagin School in Oklahoma. But uh, this is so cool. But I had the Man Manning book on the top of my TV, and I used to have, you know, reunions for all the, our family and cousins, and I'd smoke a lot of chickens and brisket and stuff and whatever, have a big meal for them at my house. And and everybody in my family, a lot of them are season ticket holders for Mississippi State football and basketball. And so one of them just come in there, they see the Manning book and just lay it down. You know, they couldn't, they oh, can't stand that. Well, and of course they did it in fun, you know, good, good natured humor about it. But I'm going to tell you something. When we walk in the light of God, we see everybody that, that God loved them so much he gave his son for them. And it puts it puts it in a in, in a proper perspective. And um, I, I'm from Holmes County, Mississippi, and I've been told it's the highest populated black county per size of any county in the United States of America. And I believe that. Uh, <clears throat> my pastor is black as this camera <clears throat> that I'm looking at. 
He's from Chickasaw County, Mississippi. And I did a, a study on Chickasaw County one day while we were praying together. I just did look, looked up some things. And in 1850, before the Civil War, there were more slaves, black slaves, in Chickasaw County than there were white people living in Chickasaw County. At least that's what it said. Now, whether it's true or not, you judge for yourself. I don't know. But my point is this. At some point in my life, as a teenager, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and people say, well, that ain't for the day. We're too late. I done got it. And I've met people all over the world that speak in tongues, and they ain't Pentecostals either. They're believers. They speak in tongues. I ain't Pentecostal because I got too much makeup on and my skirts are too short. And I sing the bar scene from Star Wars. And I love Pentecostal. Don't go get all twisted up at me. But listen to me real strong. As a teenager... I started saying sir and ma'am to every black person that I met. And my dad and my mom, to their credit, if I ever said the N-word, I got slapped. Especially by mama. My mama was fire, hell on wheels, buddy. She, you had to go pick your own switch. And it better be at least as big as your little finger. And she, you dropped your drawers to your bare legs. She switched you. Boy, we didn't. We we always prayed that daddy would come discipline us because we could talk him out of it. But mama, it wasn't into And she didn't care who was guilty. She lined all four of us up, tore us up. Whew. And boy, did we four boys fight. We would be in one room, four of us, two bunk beds and a big double bed. And boy, did we ever fight. I'm talking about fist to the face, fist fights. Now, how did I get off on all that? <laughs> I got off on it talking about seeing things through the light of God, through the eyes of Jesus. And, I, and I'm telling you that when, when you walk that way, you see people. I, I got to talk to my brother last night, first time we've had a, a real talk in about 20 to 25 years. It was the best one and a half minute conversation we've possibly had in our entire life, and and uh, it turned out it was really, really good. We, we hadn't talked in a long time, and that prayer brought that about. But you know, we we really, you know, the old saying is, "Walk a mile in my shoes." We really need to see each other. This is the reason I like to preach at daylight. See how the lights, the sun's coming up, and the lights hit me. I'm getting more light, boy. So it just fits perfectly here. Um. Sometimes when you start shining for Jesus, you offend people. But a lot of people don't. I mean, they say, well, he just think he's something. No, no, no. No, no, no. I just pray and you don't. It's like going on a camping trip. Henry McNeese was our scout master in Pickens. Love Henry McNeese. He, he was an awesome guy, man. I, in fact, I got to see him before he passed away. I saw him at Walmart and told him and had Jerry with me and we just told him how much we appreciated him taking us camping and everything and we did a lot of wrong things but we did a lot of right things too but I can remember going camping and mom and dad one of them had the wherewithal to get me some new batteries from a flashlight and you show up at the out there and, and camp on the camping trip and most folks come out there with a flashlight and turn it on. You hardly see, and you turn yours on, boy, you can see halfway across the pasture because you got brand new batteries. And some folks are, he must think he's something. He got such light there. Well, that happens spiritually. I know, I know a lady, Catholic lady, got born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in unknown tongues. Her husband was the head of the alumni of Notre Dame. And they were close with the cardinal. I mean, in fact, when she started speaking in tongues and traveling and, and speaking all over the country, the cardinal grabbed her. He was so upset with her. He says, you can't be doing that. He, he tried to stop her. Uh, Mary Fran Varillo, one of the most accurate prophets I ever heard in my life, female. Love, love Mary Fran. Well, I can tell you, she, she's awesome. But when Mary Fran came on the scene she was praying more than the big name ministers were and, and a lot of them began to criticize her i know i know it firsthand and i thought you little sissy babies is what i thought you strut around like little chickens 
because she showed you up. That's exactly what I saw. I was so proud she came on the scene. I have the greatest admiration for Mary Fran Varillo. You know, the, the, the trouble so much of the time in the church world, and I'm for the local church, especially the good one with prayers going on and soul winnings going on and healing the sick's going on and helping hurting people is going on. The trouble so many times in the church world is that people, ministers and believers, started out praying. And then they, and then they got got to, to different levels and then they felt, man, we're really following God now. And they quit praying and quit doing the things that brought God's presence into their church and into their ministries. Hope you're listening to me. And they got dry. They got dry as a powder house. Spirit quit moving. Because he wasn't welcome. Oh, I know churches. They say, well, you can, you can, you can get people saved without Holy Spirit and doing stuff and blah, blah, blah. Why, why would you even talk like that? That is so, so watered down and sissy baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what, that's about, that's about what I'd say if I was doing that. I remind, you know, you know the song that's in my first alarm that goes off at 3.50 every morning? And I won't back down. That's that secular song. That's what I hear every every morning, every day of the week, Monday through Sunday. And I won't back down. And I won't. I don't care. I love you. But you're a sissy baby if you're scared to allow Holy Spirit to move in your church and in your life. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stay around a long time to remind you. My daughter said, Daddy, you're going to outlive everybody. <laughs> well, my doctor tells me I'm going to live a long time. Several doctors have told me that. Well, I'm ready to go to heaven right now, but I'm going to hang around to help you. Do I know everything? Heck no. Do I still mess up? Heck yeah. But I'm having more fun than ever. And, and I'm, I'm going to say something. Boy, good gracious alive, my time's flying. I, I, I'm going to say, I, I, there's some of you from kindergarten. You went to kindergarten with me. And I see on Facebook you've been watching the show and stuff, and I want you to know something. Jesus loves you so much, and I do, and I, I get tears because I've been so beat up and ridiculed over the years. I didn't think anybody gave a damn about what I was doing, and I and I appreciate that, and and I pray for. I'm genuinely praying for you. I don't just say it; we pray. DavidDixon.org. Come check it out. Be a be a don't be a spectator. Be a participator. Listen, I. We ain't after the money. It takes money to do what we're doing for airtime on TV and stuff. And but I made it forty. I'm on, in my forty-second year, and uh, I ain't gonna quit. Whether you help or not, it'd be great if you did. But love you so much. I'll be right back again to wrap this thing up. Um, wow. I was just talking about. Um, wow. Yeah, I will share that, Lord. I'm just talking about the light of God and, you know, Ephesians 1.15 that were, we, they're called the Pauline prayers, you know, where Paul prayed. And, and in the Living Bible it says, I pray that your heart and mind be flooded with light. And last night I just had, I don't know if my brother gets to see this show, he may be a little too far up the country, but you may be able to watch it. But I got to talk to my brother last night, the one right under me, Sandy. He's Saint Paul Dixon, Sandy Paul Dixon. And uh, for years he wouldn't take my call. And last night he took my call. And we had a glorious reunion. But we grew up in church. And he was a, there was an offense that happened uh, with my mom back when he was very young. My, my brother Sandy started working as a welder when he was 13 years old. And he was one of the best welders in the history of the world. <laughs> you say, well, y'all were out. Yeah, well, they, I know for a fact they flew him around the world. He'd be in the Kuwaiti Gulf on top of an oil rig doing some special welding because he knew he could do all the specialty welding and all. He's one of the hardest workers. I've seen Sandy take a carburetor and put a carburetor kit in a carburetor. And I mean, he's got all these tiny little parts. He's got them laid out. And he could lay them out and put the new parts in and put it back together perfectly time after time. Man, I'd louse that up. 
and uh, one of the hardest workers I ever saw. And uh, we used to mow grass there. We used to mow the Baptist church yard together there in Pickens. And of course, what we didn't know was we'd cuss each other, get so mad and cuss each other. And when you cuss with a lawnmower running, it throws your voice, and the whole neighborhood could, could hear us cussing. And we were, we were, we attended Pickett Baptist Church, and we cuss. We had to mow the churchyard just a cussing. And I want to tell you something about the light of God. Let the light come in. And then let your light so shine before women men, girls, and boys. I let my light shine. Look, look, at the gym, they call me trouble number one. Because I'm having so much fun. I cut up. We were laughing. I got a group. We, 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 uh, they drink coffee. I, you know, I, mama told me to stay away from drugs. Just say no to drugs. So I don't drink coffee. I just drink tea. <laughs> it got more caffeine than coffee does, I think. But they're out there and we're just telling jokes. And we were laughing so loud just two or three mornings ago. One of the staff members came back to see what the heck was going on. I told him when I walked out, I said, y'all need to keep a staff member back there because it's getting out of hand. But one of the healthiest things that you can do is to laugh. Bitter people don't laugh. I've been bitter. Oh, my God. And I got better instead of bitter. I'm better than ever. But I laugh a lot. The comedians, Bob Hope. George Burns, Phyllis Diller, I could name them on and on and on. They all live to between the 95 and 100 years old. And some of them as ungodly as they can be. But they laughed and laughed and laughed. You know, it rains on the just and the unjust. And it is something that some lost people are happier than some believers. It's what you, you know, you know, you need, when, when, you, when you're riding along in your car, it runs out of gas. You got to pull in there and refill your tank. You have to do the same thing with your spirit. That's one thing we're praying in tongues. It's so good. The Bible says when you speak in unknown tongues, you talk to God. And she or he that speaks in unknown tongues edifies herself or himself. The word edify means you charge up just like you charge up a battery. I keep jumper cables in my car. I got one of those little jumper things I keep charged up in my vehicle. And I can hook those up and, 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 you, and you don't hear anything after you hook them up to that dead battery. And then after a while you hear tick, 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 and everybody gets excited. So that means we got a charge going. And you keep doing it. Next thing you know, hold off. Need a little more charge. And then everybody's so excited. Same way spiritually. Charge yourself up. Everybody say Jesus is Lord. Say, I choose to believe. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.